Okay, now we're back from break. We've had our day that we're doing our energy review. We've got a test next class. So that's Wednesday the 29th. We've got a test on energy. And before we get to that test, I'd like to do just a little bit of review so that we're all on the same page. The first thing I want to talk about is what energy actually is. Energy is either the ability to move or something that is already moving. Both of these cases, something has energy. So it's the ability to move or something that's already moving. This is energy. We can break energy down into a couple of types of energy. And this is what the test is going to be on primarily. The different types of energy and how we can solve for how much energy is in each scenario. The first kind of energy is called gravitational energy. Gravitational energy is any time we have something off of the ground, any time that something has the ability to fall, and that falling is motion. So again, the ability to fall, the ability to move, gravitational energy. The next kind of energy we talked about was kinetic energy, the actual motion of objects. So this is the actual motion. And that's an energy of itself. Next would be the elastic energy, and this is the energy that's stored in something like a spring and inside of compressing that object, that object wants to return to its original shape, we've got an elastic type of energy. And lastly, but not leastly, we've got heat energy. Heat energy is thermal energy, the energy from friction. Um, heat is the idea that... Uh, Tiny atoms are moving instead of the entire thing, and they're moving in in random directions. So we just call it heat energy. We call it thermal energy. And this is where energy goes to die. Um, it's really hard to get energy back out of heat. So heat is our last type of energy. How can we tell how much energy something has? Well, we have to take it step by step. Does it have gravitational energy? Does it have kinetic energy? Does it have elastic energy? Does it have heat energy? In order to have gravitational energy, you need to have three things. Have gravitational energy, and I'd like you to think about it this way as well when you're doing the test. Do I have gravitational energy? Well, do I have some mass? Is that mass affected by gravity? And does that mass have some height? Is it up off the ground in some way? If you say yes to any of those things, if you say rather no to any of those things, that means we don't have any gravitational energy. Kinetic energy. Does the object have mass? Is that mass moving at some velocity? If you said no to either of those, it does not have kinetic energy. Elastic energy. There is some resistance to being compressed or stretched. Are we talking about a spring or a bow? Does this thing not want to be flexed? And if it does, if it is flexed, does it want to return to its original shape? That's what this K represents. How much or how little that spring wants to be stretched, or how easily that spring that spring can be stretched. And how far is that spring stretched? So let's say that we've got a picture and there's a spring and there's a box above the spring. This spring isn't stretched or compressed. We don't have any elastic energy here. We would if the spring were actually squashed down or if it were stretched Lona out. Lou, but because it's in its original... Please report to the guidance office. Lona Lou, please report to the guidance office. But because it's in its original shape, we have no elastic energy. Mm. Um, and if we understand these things, if we can tell how much energy something has if it's gravitational, if it's kinetic, if it's elastic, or if it has heat energy, which means that it has some friction. And really the only way we can solve for this is if some energy is transformed, meaning that friction has done some work. And that's really the only case that we'll have some work equation, is if we're talking about friction. Um, work is done to change an energy from one type to another. And that's done by applying some force over some distance. We talked about work. We talked about the types of energy. Ah, let's talk about the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy 
is never lost nor gained. We use this rule an awful lot. We use this rule almost for every equation we've done since the beginning of this unit. We use this rule because we can say that if we start with some amount of energy, we have to end with that same amount of energy. So if I've got a, an apple hanging from a tree, and that apple has 1,000 joules of gravitational energy when it's up off the ground, as that apple falls, it is right before the ground. Now it has 1,000 joules of kinetic energy. We knew that all of the energy here was gravitational, and that all of the energy here is kinetic, and we know that these two things, because of the first law of thermodynamics, must also be equal. That's the majority of what you need to know. Check on the e-backpack for the answers to that worksheet I gave out today. I also put up a blank uh, copy of that worksheet, so if you want to try it all again, just print it out from e-backpack, and good luck.